in. Nice. Yeah. And we're live, actually. So, oh, nice. yeah. So, I don't know what we're going to talk about. Um, we're apparently not going to talk about why we haven't been on the air in a month. It may have been it may have been longer than a month. Probably was longer than a month. Ugh, it's been rough. Yeah. It's been rough. Sometimes personal life, personal things like will throw your shit off track. Yep. Life does get in the way. Mhm. Kind of like your friendship. Yeah. But you could end that pretty quickly. You could. You could. Yeah. But I'm a glutton for punishment. So, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, you got any you know funny I... go. go no, ahead. no, I want to talk about that though. So, cuz I just thought I'm like, you know, if I didn't if my wife wasn't as involved in the business, I wonder what I would have done if I had to be like out of commission for almost a month. Like what would you do? What would you do if you were just a if you you know, what if Amanda didn't work? Just like bedridden? You mean like you were bedridden for a month? Yeah. That'd be tough. That'd be tough. I mean, and that stuff comes along. I mean Now are you saying what would it what would <clears throat> what will we do if she didn't work or she did work and I was like, better. Like she didn't you didn't have her income to help. Like what if what if you and her are a reseller team, right? Yeah, you yeah, know? you'd be but she would be doing the job because she wouldn't be That's true. What if you're single? What if you're single? You just give it up, man. Give up the dream. <laughs> that's just, that's an interesting thought though. I never really thought yeah. about that. Yeah. My wife's been carrying the business for the last three weeks to a month. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yep. That's I, just gonna be scary. Yeah. I thought about doing the podcast alone uh several times. Like we might as well we might as well just start it with just me, you know, and then you know, eventually I could just push you out of it. That's true. That's true. <sighs> but I didn't. I think that's what happened with the Beatles. <laughs> that's exactly that's it. we we are exactly like the Beatles. That's yeah. Glad you that's a good comparison. Pretty much. Uh, so any funny well, stories or anything? I, I'm trying well, to think. Of- I'll tell you, I'm a huge Charger fan, Los Angeles Charger fan, and you're not going to care at all about the story. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. and. But they are in the playoffs for the first time since 2000, uh, 2013. Um, so it's been five long years. Um, so they're in the playoffs, and they actually won their first playoff game. So now they're deeper into the playoffs and it's like consuming my life right now. So, yeah, but that's a sports fan thing, you know, it's kind of tough for you to relate to that, but listeners mind. And if you're a bears fan, I'd ha- I'd hate to be you. And, uh, and I'll explain to you what happened at the bears game. So the bears fantastic football team playing a team. They should easily beat game goes back and forth. They have a field goal to win it. Right. The kicker kicks the field goal. It hits the left upright. It hits the crossbar. And then it bounces out. And they lose. And like this wonderful season for the Chicago Bears is over because of a field goal kick. One. Just that's it. What? That's it. Time expires. And and then, and, you know, Eagles go on. And so you think, you know, as a sports fan, and you could watch some really funny videos and of, of Bears fans like watching the field goal and it like hits the upright, hits the crossbar and their hearts, you can just do like beating out of their chest. And then it's like you have that like just that moment where like time is frozen and the ball hits the ground. You realize the entire season is over. And, it, and then if you're an Eagle fan on the other end of it, it's complete opposite. You, you think you're about to lose. It's just starting. And, and then you win, and then you're you're moving on in the playoffs. So it's the best thing about sports. It's amazing. You just never know what's going to happen. Yep. Mike and Ditka. It, yeah, yeah. He he was a bear. Da bears. He was a bear. He was a good job. Good job. I'm proud of you. That's all, that's it. That's all I know. <laughs> the SNL know. skit. I'm, hey, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. That means good. a lot. That is that is good. 
So yeah, so the NFL playoffs are are uh, on full swing. So super excited about that. But me too. Yeah. I cannot believe that uh that I didn't know about that. I I really do appreciate you catching me up. Yeah. So yeah, there's your there's your update. Yeah. I specifically asked for a funny story or something like that. That's I don't I don't have anything funny going on at all. Mm -mm. What about that drunk customer that kept messaging you for like two months? (laughs) The person had to be drunk. They had to be drunk. Okay, I have to pull these up because it's, you know, it really, (laughs) this customer was just fantastic. I don't want to. You you don't have to pull them up. Just paraphrase it. I mean, it was, it's really bad and And really hard to understand. Yeah, and, and so this customer um, was having difficulties understanding metered postage. Calculated shipping. Calculated shipping, sorry. On um, eBay. On eBay. And he just could not understand what I was saying. And so I'll, I'll read the la- latest message that he sent me. And he says, Dear sir, you did not keep your ward on the recorder. You... You said, go ahead, make the offer. I will adjust the price and the shipping. You did not do that. You went ahead, did just what you want to. Sir, I have every ward you have said. Also, eBay, have it too. Thank you, sir, Michael. He was very polite. He was very polite. But what what he didn't understand is I was telling him, yeah, I'll take $149 plus shipping. And he asked me how much the shipping is to where he was at. And I said, well, it's it's such and such amount. And he says, but he didn't understand that that amount was based on his location. And then I could not alter my ship, the, the calculated shipping. Right. And, uh, and so um, I just I had a. I had so much fun with this guy and it got to the point where I kind of, I kind of started playing around with him just cause I loved his responses, um, so much. And, uh, he was, uh, he was funny. I, I'd love to know more, more about him to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, I really think would. alcohol or drugs had to play a little part in it. Don't you think? Oh, oh, for sure. I mean, a little just, bit, it was just too, <sighs> some of the stuff just, even if like you weren't good grammatically, this steel wasn't like that steel didn't explain some of the the rationale and the thinking and stuff yeah it it was really just it it just he was in the u.s right yeah he was in the so u.s and um <laughs> so i mean it could of, be a language barrier but still it, it okay so let me read this little the last whole piece of this i found the good part <laughs> this is the best part so he says Dear sir, are you going to seal the recorder? Are not if you and I will move on. <laughs> wow. <All right. laughs> are not if you and I will move on. And I'm like, I so I'm, I'm losing it. So I so I, I put it I put on there. I said, just waiting for you to pay. He says, okay. <laughs> he didn't even buy it, right? right? And he says, okay, I ask you, you will take $170. You said yes, and you said I will take fifteen dollar for shipping, which I didn't. Just go to the site, put in eighty five dollar. That is what I did. You did not change it at all, so you went ahead and charged me two twenty one ninety. Do you think that right? I don't want the recorder. Thank you, sir. And then I wrote again, just waiting for you to pay. And he wrote, <laughs> "This is all in caps. Thank you, dot Michael." And then I really got into it. I said. You must pay me in all caps. And he, says, <laughs> no. <laughs> he, says, he says, "No, I don't. I have called eBay. They say I do not have to pay you." <laughs> and it's just like I just I, at that point, at that point, I stopped it. And he says, "I are I am moving to move on, Mike." <laughs> so now he's not even saying Michael. He's just saying Mike. Are I am moving to move on. So he's moving on to another recorder, but oh. some of the you know people complain all the time about eBay buyers, but let me tell you, some of them I just love. I love like I'll never forget this guy. Never. He was entertaining. 
he's he's the best and the, and, the, and the greatest part is that the you know he sent more messages after i you know you know after just saying that to reaffirm that he had talked to ebay and that ebay could you imagine that ebay operator like oh uh, i don't there's, especially uh, if it was one of the foreign operators oh god trying to understand like this oh yeah <laughs> Dear sir, are you going to seal the recorder or not? If you ain't, I will move on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna my bets on, on some type of alcohol. And it was all hours of the day, right? Yeah. Like it would yeah. be all throughout the day that he would be messaging. It was for a while, a couple weeks, right? It was for like a week and a half. Yeah. He was just he was just back and forth because he just could not understand what the postage what calculated shipping even like <laughs> yeah he just kept saying he's from kentucky he's located in kentucky oh you know what now that i think about it that might be a no it's no it's us oh wait like, it, like a yeah, the I gsp thought, i thought i thought maybe but that's a different that's a different story. then you were gonna feel bad because it was just broken english that's true but he usually they use a translator <clears throat> that translator is good by the way yeah uh I had a, a Russian guy wanting to buy uh, an auto, a, a Miata. It was a, apart from a Miata, it doesn't really matter what it was. But uh, you know, he messaged me and he said, "Hey, can I can I buy this?" And you know, I saw where he was from. I said, "Let me let me check." I said, "You know," and I think that's when I turned on the global shipping program uh, for him. And I started looking, doing some googling because I didn't see Russia on there. Comes to find out, eBay will not ship to Russia using GSP. I, I get weird. I you know it, it's it's kind of crappy, especially for this guy. He was is a nice guy, uh, but it, it, the messaging system did use that translate, and it was actually very accurate. I was very surprised it because at first I didn't realize it was being translated until I looked at the bottom, like the bottom right corner says something about translated by such and such, mm-hmm. but uh. He, uh, I, I said, I'm sorry. I said, you're going to have to contact eBay and, and see why they won't ship to Russia. You know, just kind of stay on them about it. So anyway, a couple weeks or months goes by and I, I get a buyer. And it's I recognize the screen name. I was like, I was like, okay, that sound, it looks like the same person. But it was going to Kentucky. So uh, no, no, it wasn't going to Kentucky. I think it was going to like New York or New Jersey. They, they found a freight forwarder. Uh, to be able yeah. to to ship it. So so I, while you were saying that, I I did a quick Google as to what reasons why they don't do that, and one of these this answer popped up on the community forum, which which makes sense. Um, it says the GSP doesn't ship to Russia for good reasons. Russia slash Russian Federation has become one of the worst customs uh, departments around. Um, it says if you ship to them, the buyer won't get the item by the time their buyer's protection runs out. So they you will they'll always they'll generally always file an item not received claim. And if the tracking does not show delivery, you must refund. So you'll be out the item and the money paid for it. And then maybe six weeks later, the buyer will get the item, have their money and the item. And so it looks like it's a customs How long's uh, the buyer protection uh <sighs> You got me out. Good for. I, I can't remember. I thought it was a thirty day. I do remember, like, you know, that there was some risk involved if you just go ahead and ship it internationally, you know, without using GSP. So that's why I didn't want to do it, even though the guy seemed nice and all. But I'm glad to know what you just said there. That no matter if he was nice or not, he could have uh, claimed an item not received, and, and you know them showing it not being delivered it it would be on us and then he would probably eventually get it um yeah so so that was that was kind of a little learning experience Mm -hmm. from russia and i've I've had a couple people from russia (laughs) Um, he was super nice guy he was like i just want to get my miata running for spring (laughs) That's that's literally what he said let's talk about return uh ebay return closing them no. And, no, no, no. Mm-mm. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that. So, when you get... But first... 
before you talk about that, let me talk about something. Um, it's very rude of you. That's, that's what I do. So the other day I told you um, that I found an easy way to count inventory without actually having to physically one, two, three, count it, right? So all those auto parts that I bought from, from the Napa store that was closing down, uh, I'm finally getting around to, to listing them and, and everything like that. Uh, after Q4, it kind of wound, wound, wound down. Yeah. And uh, so we got to count them all to, so I can see what my per item cost is. So I actually just have this this little KDC 200i uh, Coma, Comatac, uh, little wireless Bluetooth scanner. And what I did was I, I have an iPhone and I opened the notes app. <clears throat> all I did was hit the scanner and scan a barcode. And then it would go automatically go down to the next line. I don't know if this was a, a setting in the actual scanner itself or if that's just how the notepad does it. But every time I hit a barcode, it would go to the next line. So I would just go through beep, 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 and just through the entire lot of inventory. After I did that, what I was trying to say, uh, what I was trying to do was just get a, a count. I wasn't trying to get, you know, an accurate count. So if some barcodes didn't work, I, uh, you know, I didn't try to get them to work or have to manually type them in. I just went to the barcode before it and scanned it again, you know, so I would actually have a, an accurate quantity. So after I, I got done, I copied the entire list and I opened a Google Sheets document. I pasted that in Google Sheets and just went down to the bottom and saw how many line items there were. And that was it. Interesting. It tells so, you exactly how many line <clears throat> items. So what advantage so I guess one advantage of that is that if you have a lot to count, you know, you I mean you could stop in between and you don't have to worry about losing the you know number in your head and it, it seems pretty it seems pretty accurate. That's an interesting way to do it. I didn't really thought about that. Yeah. I still I still have those scanners. I don't ever use them. I have two of them. You have two? I have two. So it's like two hundred bucks a piece. For one for me and the wife. Yeah. Um Okay. They have good resale value, by the way. You That's won't, true. You won't have a problem getting rid of them anywhere on yeah. uh, an FBA group or <laughs> anything like that. Yeah. But but it is nice. <clears throat> if anybody can tell me how to hook it up to a Windows 10 PC, <laughs> I would love to know that. Because it would be nice to use it around here instead of this, this corded one that we always got to use. I've never used it. Never used mine. <laughs> Really? So how do you do your box contents in Inventory Lab? I tin key it. What? I tin key on my on my keyboard. So you just put in the quantity? Yeah. Huh. I don't I, I don't know why, like reaching over here for my scanner and then I I don't know, my tin key I just feel like it's faster. I don't know, I'm weird about that. I could see it yeah. some things. Uh tin key is I'd what I Used it my old job and just used it all day long. We didn't have a, we didn't even have barcodes that would scan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was all six digit, six and seven digit part numbers. That's awesome. I need to get those scanners going again. I feel like we could do more. Yeah, books. Books is a is an easy entry point for anybody looking to get into FBA. Uh, the really like if you don't have a lot of overhead books is there's some high ROI stuff out there, but you're going to be, you're going to be scanning for days. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's not easy. You know, you may yeah. scan a thousand books and find, what is it? 10. Yeah. I mean, I think you're like around a 1%, you know, I mean, by, yeah, I, yeah, I used scout IQ and my, my accept rate hovered around Four to five percent, which is not that good. Uh, I didn't do books long enough to get good at like spotting books and stuff like that. So I would just scan everything. Yeah, yeah. Some people, some people can. I mean, there's a lot of money. There's people make tons and tons of money. But I will say that you know one of the things that that I did when I first got started is I went to a book sale, and it was a it was a it was a five dollar bag 
brown bag sale where you shove whatever you can shove into a, a brown bag and it's five dollars and um and i had there were some professional people there like professional booksellers because they knew exactly what to go for they were scanning like a like a mofo and we were just we were sitting there like oh it just overwhelmed because you, you didn't know, even have we, a scanner right no no we were using we were using our phones and um and we had you know when we were in line for the book sale we were we were up towards the the front like it was you know i think there was only like maybe six or eight people in front of us and there was probably your 20 or 30 behind us and and shit man once once those doors open we walked in and we're like okay we're gonna come in there's gonna be books on the shelves and we're just gonna do, 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 scan 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 no that's not what it was it was a storage unit they opened the gate everybody just flooded in and it was just it was it was overwhelming like we it just, was a storage unit yeah it was in a storage unit <clears throat> so and with so the the boxes what they did was it was a very large storage unit um but it was they had bankers boxes just full of books just lined up in rows um you so know, they weren't in like gaylord piles no uh uh-uh. so you were like on the floor digging through these these little boxes and scanning and um were they at least categorized like fiction no, non-fiction no, no it was that's it was good all, yeah it was all kind of mixed and but but you could tell the people for competition that were, you could tell the people that were like the legit people like because this one guy as we were leaving because and there's there's one girl that was really kind of helping us and you know one of the things that you know you if you get into that you need to make sure you download the database um and so if you get into an area where you don't have cell reception you're really screwed well Um, let me explain what you're talking about when you say download the database so you can't use the amazon seller app to scan books you can but it's best to get an outside app like scout iq or fba scan which i think is called like scoutly or something now but you can actually download the entire database so if you don't have cell reception in there uh, or wi-fi reception it actually downloads every book in amazon you know every 62 million or however many books and it'll actually you can do it without using cell service so that's what he's talking about when he said database yeah so um so yeah so my wife and i we're 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 in this this storage unit and there was a lady there that was real kind of helpful with us and she was like hey you know yeah do this and you know make sure you have it on this database and was she a buyer no no she was well yeah she was a she sells on amazon and she was just being but she wasn't part of the book sale no 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 she was just another person so she's kind of helpful that was nice so so we found these books um threw them in a bag and got to the point where like we only had like maybe three or four books and we're like just overwhelmed with everything going on and so we walk out of the storage unit and we see these people all to the side they had pulled boxes over to for themselves like there was boxes of like cds and things like this and this one guy that was I mean, he looked like he was in his 60s, late 50s and 60s. And he had five stacks of these banker boxes full of CDs. And he's over outside the unit, kind of over on the side, just scanning through scanning through the CDs, kind of all by himself. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like, like got all the CDs out of the unit and took it. them to himself. And, it was, and he, they were first in line. That He knew exactly what he was going for. You know, he knew. And I'm like, I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate it all. Some yeah. people are like, well, that's not fair. You know, whatever. It's <laughs> play the game. He but he, he obviously knew where those CDs were in that unit. So he probably yeah. had some intel or went to a pre-sale Who or knows? something. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? But he knew, he knew exactly. But there were other people that had done similar things where they had, they had kind of got their initial, initial stuff and then went over there and like, okay, now I'm going to pick through. It's kind of like kids. Kids do the same thing. Like they grab all these toys. They don't know what they are, but they're just going to grab as many toys as they can. They're going to go over their corner. They're going to find the toys that they want and they're going to play with those and leave the rest. So, so anyway, so we're walking out and we got like half a bag full and the lady's like, don't you want to put some more stuff in there? I mean, it doesn't change the price. And we're like, oh, yeah, I guess. So we like go back in there and like, 
it's <laughs> she so, basically said, you're not going to give up that easy, are it's, you? <laughs> it's so chaotic in there that it was hard for us to, like, it was just hard for us to, we were so new at it that it was just overwhelming. It was a really cool learning experience, but it was. Um, was it the first time you ever went and scanned books, period, anywhere? No, we had scanned books at, you know, Goodwill and, you know, other places. But I think it, I think it really just boiled down to the, just the craziness of the, of the sale. And it was like. You, you had all these different things and it was like it's like you're when you're playing like supermarket sweep and it's like well, what do i go for first like yeah it's so overwhelming at first you freeze and it's like well crap well, where do i start and so, so some of the things that that we saw from other people was that they just went straight they went to one box and just one by one boop 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 Boop, 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 boop. And they were just going. They all had their scanners. It was quick and efficient. Boom. On to the next one. Um, and one of the other things that we that we saw now, and you'll have to check your local sales, your book sales and things like that, is a lot of people brought their own bags. Now, we had just the $5 bags that they provided us, but there were other people that had really large bags. Like big and Ikea so, bags? Yeah. And so what they were able to do was they were able to store more, you know, keep it on their shoulder and throw all the books in there. Whereas we were kind of hampered by the fact that we had this $5 bag and we kind of had to keep, okay, keep the book, the bag with us. Right. And so yeah. it was always in the way, you know, so, um, so think outside the box, but, but I tell you, if we ever do another one of those, which I think, I think we some people do. have rolling cards. <laughs> Yeah, they had that too. Yeah, absolutely. I think if we ever do another uh, uh, book sale like that, I think we're going to be much more like prepared, uh, right? For sure. Um, but I, I think if if you, if if one of y'all, you know, out there, if listeners, whatever, you go to them, just experience it. Don't expect to be, don't expect to make any money. Like, don't go there and be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. It won't happen. It won't happen. I promise you, unless you're just a. I think that's you know, good advice. It just feel it out first. I mean, it's like going to the bins, the Goodwill bins. See, yeah, I've never the been Goodwill to the Goodwill outlet. Yeah, I've never been to those, but I have heard that it's pretty like insane. Yeah, some of them are are crazy. And the dogs barking. <laughs> what are the dogs? What are the dogs say? They got like squirrels out there. There's no, yeah, there's no they're telling. Usually, they're usually pretty quiet. They are most of the time. What happens is they'll hear like a, a car door close or something at night and they think it's like the UPS guy. Oh, they hate the UPS guy. I'm looking at the camera, I don't see, I don't see anything out there. They hate the UPS guy, huh? Well, they think it's somebody trying to, you know, come into our house or whatever. That's funny. So yeah. they hear the beeping. The beep, beep, beep. <laughs> and they <laughs> just, they fucking, they lose it. Well, one loses it and then the other one loses it. But That's good advice though on the, on the book sales. Like don't, don't go in just expecting to just kill it. You yeah. know, don't make an Instagram post about it yet before you yeah. get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It- it's funny how that those things change once you once it happens. It's so much different. Any all, I mean that you could say that about anything in life. It's it's always different than you expected. Number one, because everybody's perception of things is different, and two, it's just you can't imagine something unless you've already been there. That's true. Yep. Yeah, that is true. Obscure life advice. And if you're taking life advice from me, you're <laughs> you are in trouble. Yep. Uh, that leads us to our next point. Get a mentor. <laughs> that, that is literally that's that's literally the next thing really? on the list. Yeah. I, I I think we've touched on it before. Um, in this business, the doing Amazon FBA for sure. Uh, a mentor is probably the best thing you can do to to help you grow. Uh, eBay, eBay is okay. It's fine. You know, the learning curve's not steep. 
you look up solds, you can go to a thrift store, pick stuff up, whatever. There's there's nothing really past that. But with Amazon, you've got sales rank, you've got prime listings, merchant fulfilled listings, you've got keep a chart, you've got all of this stuff that you have to take into consideration. Restrictions on brands, just everything. And it, it's it's really... It can be extremely overwhelming. So getting somebody, you know, even if it's just somebody on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, that you can kind of private message when you have questions and stuff. You know, it'll help you avoid a lot of pitfalls uh, and and help you grow a lot quicker. So I hear, like, if if I'm a single mom living wherever and I want to get into this and I don't have any single any well i don't have to be single mom. i don't have any friends that are into this how do i go about doing that i could just uh i mean first thing would be starting the network on, on some type of social media uh there's so huge facebook. huh yeah facebook, like facebook groups. instagram whatever um I, i've never used snapchat i don't know if you can use that for that but i use it three times i don't like it yeah twitter you might be able to use Twitter, but he, he, the ones I'm familiar with is, is Facebook or Facebook and, and Instagram. And in both of them, you know, you can find uh, other FBA sellers pretty, pretty easily. You know, on mm-hmm. Facebook, you just go search, it literally put in FBA or Amazon seller or something like that. And you will find hundreds, if not thousands of groups. And, uh, You pick some big groups, you get in those groups, you get mad, you get out of those groups, and you get into (laughs) smaller groups. You get blocked from groups for an unknown reason. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So my advice on on like Facebook, if you're going to look for a group, if you get in a group that's 40 to 100,000 members, it's most likely not going to add anything. uh, It's not going to help you at all because it's just a bunch of people complaining and stuff. Uh, I would suggest getting into some smaller groups but that's just me but instagram same way you can just follow hashtags um you can follow road to resale it's pretty much the best one to follow in my opinion it's true Um, and you're completely unbiased with that completely unbiased Uh, i only run the account so it's not like i have a big stake in this who's your favorite who's your favorite instagram uh, account to follow we're talking ebay or fba don't matter um i'd probably say wade's ventures he's no. uh he's just a nice guy and, and he I, provides quality information you know I, I i follow wade's ventures uh instagram too and you know and i saw him at ebay open i would it but i hadn't I didn't really know enough about him to go up and introduce myself and kind of talk to him. Right. And and I wish I wish eBay Open was like I guess the next eBay Open I'll really be able to like actually interact with some of these people that I've continued to follow, but he's like he's like one of the ones that you just feel like he's just just a genuine giving out great advice and and there's nothing behind it there's nothing he's about to sell you or you know um yeah but i i just think that uh, uh he's very active too i don't know how the hell that dude has time there's no fr- like two young children what? yeah he's got he's got kids every time you see him he's in a mountain full of inventory and i'm like dude how do you have or cleaning a storage do- unit out by himself yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's like how the hell do you have time to do all this social networking but anyways, um, yeah, he's he's my favorite too. Yeah, um, like you, you you nailed it though, and that that's kind of what separates the ones I like from the ones I don't like. He has never once tried to sell anything for his information, at least not yet. You know, a lot of them they get there eventually, but it's just even if he does, he's just such a nice guy, yeah. and, and you can tell. That he just wants to pay it for. He's always having people on the podcast. He's even, you know, offered for us to be on his podcast. And yeah, you know that. Would hopefully, be really, we'll we'll grow we the balls one day to do that. Or, yeah, we need to we need to do that, and then then we'll party with him in Vegas. Good point. I don't actually like know who the hell we are. 
Maybe we could get matching ramen suits. That's true. No, we can't. We can't. Steal, we can't steal be, this thing. That'd be a little. That would be weird. That'd be a little creepy. Yeah, yeah. That would be creepy. Well, that's what we do. You want to talk about return requests? I, yeah. I heard you said something about that earlier. Yeah. So one of the cool things about returns, pretty much the only cool thing about returns, is sometimes what platform are we talking? eBay. About? eBay. So a lot of times. You know, they don't send the item back. So I didn't, you know, if when, when a buyer opens a return and you authorize it, um, you can, the buyer then has the opportunity to send it back. Now, when you go into the, the, de, uh, the button that says see details next to the return, when you click that, it'll, there'll be a message above that and it says, you know, the buyer has been sent the shipping label. We are now waiting on the buyer to ship the item. Um, the buyer has until this date to ship it, or we may close the return for you. Now, FYI, eBay will never close it for you. You have to actually call them. So one of the things I always do is I make sure that when, that when say, for instance, somebody wants to return some shoes and it's been a couple of days um, haven't got any notifications that it's been shipped. I'll check those details, and if it's uh, like say, say, say for instance it says okay January eighth, um, the customer has until then to ship it. Well January 9th, I'm calling eBay and I'm saying hey, customer has not shipped it. eBay then uh, closes return on your behalf and all is well. Um, <clears throat> so and the, you, you, there's no they can't no, reopen. They can't reopen it. Um, they can't leave negative feedback um, about it either, which is really nice. Um, so, and it doesn't affect your account at all. It just closes that window. So it's kind of nice. And I mean, if you think about it, it's very uncommon nowadays that a company would stop a customer from being able to ship that back because I, I believe I don't know the 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 um, I don't hundred percent know the window. But it's like about seven days or so that the customer has to. Sh it's uh, five days. It's oh, five. five days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has five days. It's like back. midnight on the fifth day or something. Yeah. And that's that's really really. So for you know for a company to um, say, only give a customer that long to ship something back, it's it's pretty rare. I mean, you, yeah. you see, yeah, Amazon. There's customers. You'll get a customer return for something you sold months ago. Oh. Um, Years, uh, that that's gonna. I want. I want to. I want to say something about that real, real quick in just a second. Go ahead. Uh, can but can PayPal? Can they? Can they file a PayPal claim after? Now I have seen. I have seen that happen. But you know, every time, and and I only know from personal experience. Every time I've had a customer like upset about a return, they do it as a dispute in PayPal. In the case details, as long as you provide that tracking number and you and it shows that it was delivered, PayPal will generally release the release the hold and end the dispute. Now, I can't say with a hundred percent certainty that that happens in all cases, um, but in the cases that I've had, which is really I think I've had maybe four um, out of I think close to fifteen hundred transactions this year. So this I year, we, I think we did. not Oh, we didn't win that. It's, yeah, anyways, it's like the whatever, whatever. Nine. But uh, um, yeah, no, the calendar. Yeah, so rolling, <laughs> rolling twelve months. Not not this year, not the last nine days. God, that would be awesome. Oh my god, that would be awesome. So you know, the last um, uh, so four, four maybe, um, maybe three. Um, so seventeen hundred. Last twelve months, seventeen hundred items. And I'd say, yeah, probably about four um, PayPal issues. That's that's they, it's so few. It seems like yeah, I and mean, it's very rare. It's very rare. And PayPal, you know, they've been very helpful. Every time I've had to call them, I've had no issues with PayPal at all. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, I wonder what it's going to change. What it, what it's going to turn into when eBay starts, uh, you know. Doing all the, handling all the payment transactions and all, or uh, actually, it's a it's a 
company, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it is a it is a third party company. Um, kind of got a weird name. I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. I I think it's going to be huge this year at eBay Open. What do you I mean? The switching to the payment, the new payout system. Yeah, From if they get I've... GSP working with it, you can't do GSP on it, right? I don't I don't know, but I'm, everything I'm pretty I've heard, sure people have said do not opt into it yet. Yeah. There's too many bugs, too many things to be, and once you opt in, you cannot opt out and go back. You're done. So um, I did hear somebody saying it may have been Casey, um, the Rockstar Flipper, saying that you that he opted in and opted back out. I somebody did, but yeah. it was somebody big, I think, you know, so I'm sure they had some connections or whatever. Yeah, I do not, I don't think you can opt out or opt back out. Um, yeah. So, um, but, you know, who knows? I don't know everything, so. Well, ain't that Just the damn things. truth? Just most things. So, and I almost don't want to say this just in case there's somebody listening that, that could you know, do this, but I heard a little while back that somebody had an Amazon return from two years ago. What they did was, or what they, they figured out what most likely what had happened was that this buyer, most likely it was just a scam, called eBay customer, or excuse me, Amazon customer service and said, I need to return this item. Well, what they did was they waited like two years exactly, you know, or within a couple days of the date they bought it two years before. So all the customer service rep saw was, you know, December 2nd, that it was bought on December 2nd, but it was bought on December 2nd, two years ago. They didn't look at the year. Yeah. So they went ahead and, yeah. Interesting. So that's something to to look out for if, if you get a return. And I think the person just said that they remember not having stock on this for like a couple of years. They're like, how could somebody return this? I haven't had this in, in years. And that's what it was, which I would figure would be an easy reimbursement, you know, yeah, to, to gain. I but I, I did hear <clears throat> somebody recently on Instagram, um, got his FBA account shut down when Amazon did not receive or said they didn't receive an entire box of his shipment. Yet he had all the tracking information and everything. Why would his account get shut down? Because they, I guess they thought that he was trying to like oh. delete shipments and get his shipment to the right place or something. Oh, okay. But anyway, they, they suspended his account and won't talk to him. As far as I know, they won't talk to him still. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. You'll have to give me that guy's account name so I can follow him. Yeah. Um. That's interesting. He's documenting the whole thing, and basically, yeah. he's just pivoted his his business to, you know, eBay and stuff right now. That's it was right crazy. after he went full time, like like a couple weeks after he went full time, I believe. Quit that his is, job, everything, and then Amazon. It's like, all right, you're suspended. Yeah, um, but that that kind of crap happens, and you kind of you either got to thicken your skin. Uh, or you know and just deal with it or quit cuz Amazon is very strict and very unforgiving even if it's their fault. Mm-hmm. Uh they have a really hard time admitting fault even when you have the burden of proof. Um so what's been happening recently is well, I guess I guess I don't I say recently I've only been selling for a little over a year and a half but I know it happens more and more. You get a, a, a shipment, an FBA shipment sent in, and they don't receive all of it. They're like, oh, we well, had such and such missing inventory, and this was missing. It's like, no, I, I that was in the box. But you can't, they, they, they'll they say, you know, you try to do a reconcile on it, and um, they'll say, well, no, we, we did a thorough investigation, you know, and this is a closed you know, due to, you know, d- yeah. we, we already double checked it or whatever and you have no recourse. So you either get mad and you just keep selling or you get mad and you quit. <laughs> That's crazy. You just get, I mean, some of this stuff, it's not worth it because every little reimbursement that you basically have to get on Amazon, you have to open a case for it. And unless you're 
paying for a service that, that goes through and creates all these cases for you, you're doing all this on your own. And if you're doing this full time, nobody has. If you're a one, two person team, you don't have time to go in and figure out, oh, well, they charge me oversized fees on this small item or they refunded this customer out of you know the return window or whatever you know it's a lot it is a, a lot, lot to mess with for sure so if anybody ever tells you that e uh amazon or, or ebay for that matter are an easy way to make a living <laughs> automatically ask them what are you trying to sell me <laughs> Because I guarantee they're trying to sell you something. <sighs> so, I'm glad to be back. Yeah, it's it's about time. I'm happy to be back. It's about damn time. I'll be putting out more content, more content, more frequently. Um, I think 2019, we're really gonna try to get this thing, get this thing out there, and get it going. <clears throat> what, what what'd you say nah, I mean, no I'm just it's just bullshit just okay. bullshit see you in three months <laughs> yeah um last thing I really got on here well two more things uh I'm sure everybody if you sell on Amazon and you sold through Q4 of this year you noticed that either yourself or many people you know had a banner come up on their toy listings on, on the seller app and it said, not available for Merchant Fulfill. What did it say? What was the actual? Not eligible for... Well, FBA required. Yeah. That's FBA what it was. Yep. it was. It said FBA required on it, which means you couldn't MF or seller, seller Fulfill, Merchant Fulfill, whatever you want to call it. You could not do that yourself. So what happened was, um, I'm going to open it up here, and they they send out a, a an email, and it, it says, if you, uh, effective on October 17th, if you meet these criteria, you can sell in the toys and games uh, category as a, a merchant fulfilled seller. If you do these things. So it's your first sale on Amazon.com has to be prior to August 18th. It doesn't need to be specific to the toys and games uh, category. And you have to process and ship at least 25 orders from August 1st to uh, October 1st. Uh, it said those orders do not need to be specific to the toys and games. Uh, your pre-fulfillment cancel rate from the period of September 1st to September 30th has to be less than 1.75%. So you can't have uh, a bunch of cancels on, on MF orders. Uh, actually, depending on how many MF orders, you probably can't have any cancels or yeah, maybe it, more it, than it, one. 1.75% is The goal is, the goal is, is 1%. Yeah. Uh, your late shipment rate for that period... September 1st through the 30th has to be less than 4%. So if you drop your stuff off at, say, the post office and you don't get them to scan it and they don't scan it in until a day or two later, you can't sell MF toys all Christmas, all Q4. You're out. Mm -hmm. And Q4 for toys is big. Um, and then the last thing is your order defect rate has to be less than 1%. Uh, short term as of October 1st. I'm not really sure what that means uh, as far as short term. Uh, that may be one that's like within the last seven days or last 30 days. Uh, do you, are you familiar with defect rate? For MF? Yeah. Yeah, again, under 1%. But, I mean, what a defect rate is. What is that... So it's essentially a, it's an unresolved customer uh, issue or complaint okay. um, resulting from a defective product. Okay. So basically an A to Z claim. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So if, if you or anybody you know uh, got that little red banner that popped up, uh, usually in the place where it says this item's restricted, it, it would say FBA required. That's why you were seeing it. 
Um, yeah. So, and I just happen to have a product uh, that for some reason I couldn't FBA it or something. And I think that I, I just happened to sell, you know, 25 items. So I never saw that that banner on my stuff and I was wondering why everybody else was seeing it because you know people that that sold a lot more and a lot longer than me were were getting that banner but that that explains it so next year just make sure from you know July to October get you about 25 to 50 merchant fulfilled orders and and you should be good yeah you know just get those orders in doesn't matter what it is Break even on it if you have to. to yeah. I mean, it's just like getting ungated for a category. Sometimes you just break even or lose a little money to gain that, to gain that advantage, to gain that, you know, uh, last thing I want to talk about is, is moving on from bad buys. (laughs) Yeah. We saw several this year that we thought were going to be super hot sellers. And what ended up happening was the market was flooded with them. And I'm not necessarily talking about toys, but it can be toys. Uh, if you see an opportunity to to make some money, or at least make your money back on an item uh, during Q4, go ahead and take it because you may not see that opportunity again, depending on what the item is. Uh, the more sellers you start seeing on that listing, the less chance there is that you're going to be able to 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 pull that profit that you thought you were going to get out of that listing back out, you know? So sometimes it's, you know, throw it at buy box and go, mm-hmm. you know, move on, move on. The, the, the main moral of this is move on to something more profitable, get your capital back, you know, and start over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I did that on, on a few things and I'm going to have to probably take a loss on, on some things that, that didn't quite pan out, but, um, so what would, would you, are, are you considering keeping that stuff there and just bottom and the price out to where the, where it's at the buy box to where you'd be losing money on it? Or are you going to bring that stuff back and hold it for next year? Mm-mm, I won't bring it back. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even mess with it. I wouldn't pay the shipping to get it back. And I would just, I'd, I'd liquidate it and be done with it. And it's not high dollar stuff. It's yeah. very, very inexpensive. You know, so, but it was something that's like, eh, hey, maybe this could be hot. Yeah. Didn't work out, so. It's, an, it's another reason not to go super deep on something, you know, because you never know. Because this, the particular item I'm thinking about last year, oh, excuse me, uh, the particular item I'm thinking about that we bought this year, last year, the the demand was very high and there was very little supply. So when they It was an RA item, and they got them into all these stores, and once they sold out, I don't think you saw them again for the entire rest of the season, and that, you know, it was in October or November that they sold out, and you never saw them again. Well, this season, they planned better, and they had so much stock. I think they they over-ordered, because they were offering super deep discounts on this stuff, you know, probably a month before Christmas. And it, we had already bought our stuff at the higher price. So we kind of got screwed twice on it, but it's a learning experience. You know, if you see something hot one year and it's hot and it makes a lot of money because the demand's high and the supply's low, that might not be the case the year after. You know, companies are getting smarter with their, their the way they plan and the way, you know, they forecast all their stuff. You know, they're using tools just like we are. Most of them using a lot more advanced tools, you know. Yeah, and you know the other thing too is when you're buying some of this stuff, send it in ASAP. The yeah. Day you buy it. The day you buy it, send it in. Yep. Um, or, uh, just cause it means it's just it's so that's one of the most important things is getting it in there before everybody else gets it in. Yeah, and Q4, and that's another advantage to doing seller fulfilled or seller fulfilled prime, is because. As soon as you buy it, you've got it, and you've got it for sale. You don't have that prime badge, but you've got it. Say there's only a couple sellers, you know, and that prime guy is way, way above you on price. You, you may, mm-hmm. you may take a lot of sales, but uh, Q4, oh, this Q4 was very frustrating 
you know, I, I sent some stuff in probably the 10th or before in December. And some of that stuff's like just now hitting the warehouse. That was yep. very frustrating because this was, this was Christmas stuff. I knew that I was cutting it close, but depending on what warehouse you're getting your stuff sent to, sometimes they have it checked in within seven days, you know? Yeah. This stuff was taking three or four weeks. I'm like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's but, frustrating. You know, lesson learned, right? Yeah. So this year, I think we, uh, I, I think you and me both are going to be kind of pivoting and looking at PL as a as an option to kind of alleviate some of this RAOA competition, you know, and kind of, uh, I think it's a natural progression of, of FBA sellers is to to kind of move towards either wholesale or PL uh, kind of yeah. cor- cordon yourself off. Or cor- cor- not sure. That I, don't, I don't even think that's a word, but you know, isolate yourself, word. isolate yourself from, from all the competition. You know, if you've got a PL product, uh, private label product that, that no one else out there's got, then you have you literally have no competition. All you have to do is promote it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So looking forward to that. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be that's gonna be a long learning process. <laughs> yeah. Gonna be, it'll be worth it. Yeah. But that's for the next episode. Yep. Oh, one last thing. So uh, looks like we're a little over an hour. Um, on eBay. The other day, I got a feedback, and the feedback... Well, I can't read it now. Anyway, I was going to try to find it and read it. Uh, I'm pretty good about sending stuff out and, you know, making sure it's fast, making sure it's shipped probably way safer than it needs to be, just overpacking it and everything. I just... Go way above and beyond it. That's just, I think it's per, part of my personality. It's not really like, you know, part of my business motto or anything. But I got a feedback that was basically the opposite of anything that I would ever expect to see. And uh, so I, I messaged the person. I said, you know, can you please let me know what happened? So give the just. So, so I can't find it. Yeah, but. Basically, the the feedback was I could tell it wasn't for my. Okay, I remember what it was. It was a, a vacuum part, and they said the item. I believe they said the item wasn't real. Uh, and so, uh, I thought I found it. Uh, it anyway, it, it just it wasn't my item. And I, I contacted the buyer, and they said, "Oh crap! I was just going through and, and leaving feedback, and uh, I left that feedback, you yeah, know, for this other person yeah. for you." So I said, "Oh crap!" She said, "You know, how can I change it?" And I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> I've never run into this before." So I just Googled it and uh, found that you can actually. Well, what you do is you go to the home. Is it home? It's home, community, feedback forum, and on the right side of the screen, uh, it, there is a request feedback revision button, and you just send that to the buyer, and that's it. They just they can they can revise their feedback. So they were able to change it. It must have been a neutral, you know. Yeah, it was neutral. I remember you telling me about. Yeah. It. Yeah, because you called me about that. I remember that. Because I, I mean, I rarely ever get anything other than positive you know they it's always fast shipping you know great packaging whatever but this was like completely opposite i was like no that there's no way there's no way that could have been me and it's it's, weird that they would mix up feedback well they bought that that same exact item from me and from someone else Uh, but i think they bought that item from someone else for me and maybe they didn't either they didn't get it or it was counterfeit or something. I, it, you were saying it was counterfeit. It was like a not authentic or not not like an OEM. Remember? Yeah, like yeah, OEM. yeah. 
I remember that. Yeah, and and I bought it directly from the company. I was like, no, no, that was that was real. Yeah, I even had it in my pictures. But anyway, I uh, I found out how many items we had from that Napa store. Do you want to give it a guess? Out of the Napa store, um, is it three digits? Yeah. Um, Five forty. I had actually kind of close. I counted four hundred and sixteen items. That doesn't include all the bolts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that gives me without the bolts, that gives me a buy cost of two fifty nine per piece. Yeah, I love the buy cost. I love when you buy bulk like that. And your buy cost is like a dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so every starter, every alternator, everything was two dollars and fifty nine cents yeah. a piece. So I, I figure I sell twenty, ten to twenty, you know, alternators and starters. You know, and that that should cover with with the profit and recouping the money. That should that should recover mm -hmm. the the buy cost of it. Yeah, and the rest is the rest should rest be straight is, profit. Yep. So anyway, yeah, um, we we have said this on more episodes than I am uh, than I want to say, but we're gonna do this more often. I knew it was coming too. See, I knew, I knew. I well, knew. you should know. This is I embarrassing. Know. I agree. I just <laughs> said it. I just said like fifteen minutes ago. I said we're gonna do more. Yeah, it's gonna be better. It's gonna be better. Yeah. Well, so it's up to you, sir. 2019 hey don't put it all on me no i am 100 percent putting it all on you <laughs> all right now good episode and um yeah we'll we'll do another one next week i'm gonna hold you to it yep okay well have a good right. night um yeah yeah talk to you soon bye-bye goodbye Put it right in front of your face. Like right in front of your, your nose. So we get the best sound possible. Okay, I'm ready. Right here, like this. And check one. Check, check, check one, two.